The Weather Channel is coming to YouTube TV, DirecTV Stream is raising rates on some of its plans, and the Roku Channel is producing a biopic based on Weird Al Yankovic's life. We're going to talk about all that and more in this week's episode of Cord Cutting Weekly. Hi folks, and welcome to Friday, January 21st, 2022. This is Cord Cutting Weekly, the show where we wrap up the past week in cord cutting and streaming news. And like we said at the top, we've got an interesting mix of topics to discuss today. But first, of course, if you haven't done so already, please do consider clicking on those like and subscribe buttons down below. Those are great ways to support our channel and we'd really appreciate it. And for all of you tuning in for the very first time, just a quick heads up, for all of the stories we're about to discuss here on Cord Cutting Weekly, you'll find links included down below in the video description, and those links will bring you on over to our news website, cordcuttersnews.com, where you can stay up to date on all things cord cutting 24-7. And now with all of that laid out, let's dive straight into the news, starting with the Weather Channel coming to YouTube TV. First up, YouTube TV has signed a multi-year deal with Byron Allen's Allen Media Group, and as part of that new deal, the Weather Channel is coming to the live TV streaming service. And then later in the year, more Allen Media Group channels are expected to join the YouTube TV lineup. In return, AMG gets access to Google's tools and technology as it looks to accelerate its growth in the market, including improving its apps and expanding to more platforms. We're still waiting on exact timing for when the Weather Channel will join YouTube TV's live TV streaming lineup, but we'll continue to keep an eye out for any updates and we'll report back when we hear more. And speaking of YouTube TV, the service was your top pick in the best live TV streaming service category during our 2021 Cordy Awards. Jess and I discussed more of your favorites, including your top subscription streaming service and the most popular free options in a video we published earlier this week. Be sure to check out our recap video to see who came out on top in several categories. Of course, we'll have a link included down below in the video description if you haven't had a chance to check it out just yet. And we've got another price hike to discuss, this time from DirecTV Stream. This week we learned that DirecTV Stream is raising prices on several of its plans starting on January 23rd. Now we have more details in our full post link down below of course in the video description, but to sum up, affected plans will be going up by $5 to $10 per month. For instance, the choice package goes from $84.99 per month up to $89.99. Meanwhile, the Ultimate package jumps from $94.99 per month to $104.99, and the Premier plan goes up by $10 per month from $139.99 to $149.99. Meanwhile, the Entertainment package price stays put at $69.99 per month. And here's a quick look at how grandfather plans are affected. And again, don't forget to check out the full post linked down below for more info. But heads up for all you DirecTV Stream customers out there, again, these price changes are expected to take place starting on January 23rd. Next up, we have a few Fubo TV stories to discuss. The live TV streaming service was pretty active this week, and we'll start with the arrival of a new add-on that focuses squarely on news content. It's called News Plus, and it's now available for all Fubo TV users at $2.99 per month, though the add-on will be included at no cost for those on the Fubo TV Extra plan. As for what's included in the News Plus add-on, there are eight channels in all, including four that are new to Fubo TV, like Africa News and Bloomberg. You can find out more about the News Plus add-on in our full post link down below. Next up, Fubo TV is also upping the regional sports fee for subscribers in New England. The fee affects subscribers in that market that receive NESN and NBC Sports Boston. The fee now stands at $8.99 per month, which represents about an 80% increase over the $5 fee Fubo TV introduced back in October of 2021. As far as we know, the price increase applies to new subscribers only. Existing Fubo TV subscribers haven't been hit with the price hike as of the publication of our original article, but we'll continue keeping an eye out in case anything changes. For now though, heads up if you're in New England and considering a Fubo TV account. And for the last stop in our tour of Fubo TV, the live TV streaming service is sprucing up its multi-view mode on Apple TVs. So the multi-view feature, as the name might suggest, allows users to combine several video streams and watch them all at once. This week, Fubo TV announced users can add live stats and scores alongside those video feeds. It's a feature they're calling Fan View, and the company says it's a way to, quote, turn passive viewers into active participants, and define a new category of interactive sports and entertainment. The move falls in line with Fubo TV's efforts to explore more interactive sports content, including its recent free-to-play gaming and the expansion of the Fubo Sportsbook. 
And if you do give the new fan view feature a shot on Apple TV, feel free to sound off in the comment section down below with your thoughts on the new feature. In Peacock News, the streaming service announced this week that it will expand its local news offerings via several NBC-owned stations. The first handful of stations include NBC5 Chicago, NBC10 Philadelphia, NBC10 Boston, New England Cable Network, and NBC6 Miami. And Peacock says it will follow up with stations in New York and Los Angeles in the next few months. And to be clear, you won't have to live in those specific markets to have access to those local channels. Instead, all Peacock users can view those channels and you can check out simulcast programming, previous news presentations, and more. And of course, you can find out more in our full post link down below in the video description. Moving on, we've got another update on Roku's continued efforts to secure exclusive original content. This week we learn Roku is producing a new biopic about musician Weird Al Yankovic. Production is scheduled to start next month and the film currently carries the title Weird, the Al Yankovic Story. The film features Harry Potter star Daniel Radcliffe in the lead role and follows Yankovic's life and career. No word just yet on the exact release date for the movie, but once it is made available, you'll find it on the Roku channel. Stay tuned. And last but not least this week, we finally have more info on Amazon's ambitious series set in the world of The Lord of the Rings. Up until now, we didn't know all that much about the series, including when it would release and what it would actually be called. Well, Amazon addressed those two mysteries, at least, via a fancy new trailer showcasing the show's full name. And so the new series will go by the name The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, which I will personally refer to as Lottertrop moving forward. And yes, that is rings plural. If you're only vaguely familiar with the world of J.R.R. Tolkien's classic, you may not know that before there was the One Ring, there were a few others. And it looks like we'll get to explore that time frame soon. And as far as how soon, well, Amazon also shared a release date of September 2nd, 2022. And yes, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, will be available exclusively on Amazon's own streaming platform, Prime Video. For now, though, if you're a big Lord of the Rings fan, feel free to sound off in the comment section down below with your thoughts on the name so far. And so there you go. Those were some of the top headlines from the past week. And as we always say at this point, thank you all for watching. Again, please do consider clicking on those like and subscribe buttons down below. They are both a huge help to our channel and they help signal to YouTube that it should continue recommending our content to more and more viewers. And just one quick programming note before we sign off for the day, I will be out next Friday, January 28th, 2022. So we won't have our regular episode of Core Cutting Weekly. However, we'll still round up all the biggest core cutting and streaming stories for the week, and we'll publish a post on our YouTube channel for you to check out. For now though, I thank you all again for tuning in this week. My name is Philip Palermo, and I hope you all have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Take care.